Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching video number 18, Installing and Administering Linux FTP Server. This is part of Fast Track CBT Video, Linux Networking and Administration. So in this video we're going to be talking exclusively about Linux FTP Server. We're going to go uh, into Add Remove Packages and install it, and then we're going to learn about administering Linux FTP Server. Then back at the Big Sky Fishing Supply Company, we have an excellent scenario to test out whether or not our FTP server really works and learn how to do some basic configuration on it. So with that, let's get started. First off, let's talk about installing Linux FTP server. Now FTP is the file transfer protocol, and it uses TCP to transfer files across a network. It works on the client and server principle, where you have an FTP server and you have an FTP client. The client connects to the server and either uploads or downloads files. The client authenticates with a username and a password. Now Fedora Linux does not come with an FTP server installed, but you can install the FTP server manually. Now when installing the FTP server from the package manager, you're actually installing a program called VSFTPD, and that stands for the Very Secure FTP Daemon. The website for this application is vsftpd.beast.org, and the source for VSFTP is freely available at this website, so you can take the source and compile it for whatever version of Linux you're running. In our case, we already have a pre-compiled version that we can easily install through the package manager. Now, from the uh, VSFTPD website, uh, here are the features that they list that VSFTPD offers. It offers virtual IP configurations, so you can make one server into multiple FTP servers. You do this by adding um, new IP addresses to a server. So you have, say, five IP addresses on a server, and you set up uh, VSFTPD to answer to every one of those different IP addresses and every one of the different IP addresses represents a different uh, different FTP directory and a different FTP server if you will. You can have virtual users that go along with those virtual uh, servers. You can have it can run standalone or it can run under INETD or ZINETD. It has powerful per user configura configurability so you can go into the configuration and say this user can do this and this user can't. It has bandwidth throttling, so people don't you know, suck down all the bandwidth on your network downloading FTP files. It has per source IP configurability, so when a certain device or certain IP address connects to the server, that IP address can have certain you know, features or access. And it has per source IP limits, so you say when this IP address connects to us, uh, it can only do these things. It supports IP version 6 and it supports encryption through an SSL uh, integration program. Now after installing VSFTPD you can choose to install two other alternate FTP servers. They are Pro FTPD and Pure FTPD. These are just other FTP servers. They're good FTP servers. They're just not the default FTP server that's installed. So now let's learn about administering FTP. Now the configuration file used to manage VSFTPD is located in Etsy VSFTPD and it's called VSFTPD.com. This is a large long text file that you use to edit uh, and configure VSFTPD. Now you can find the HTML man page for the VSFTPD.com file at this website here. So let's click on that and let me just show you this man page. Uh, this is for the configuration file, not for the actual server, but for the file used to configure it. So the configuration in the file is based on this option equals value. So if you go through here, you can look. Here's an example of an option, allow anonymous SSL. The default is no. So if you set equals yes, then you're allowing anonymous SSL. And if I scroll down through all these options, you can see there are many, many options uh, that can be used to configure VSFTPD.
So that's the uh, configuration file there. You can go read it at your leisure. Uh, we're going to close this out now and go back to our slides. Uh, and I also want to point out that the man page for that configuration file will be on your Fedora system once the VSFTPD server is installed. Now, unfortunately, there's no GUI interface provided in Fedora to manage VSFTPD. You can download something like Webmin and use it to manage VSFTPD. Now, VSFTPD can be run from the Red Hat Services application or under ZynetD, or you can just run it standalone if you choose to. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to run it under the Red Hat Services. VSFTPD can be controlled using PAM. PAM is Pluggable Authentication Modules. Now, PAM is used to control authentication for a variety of Linux uh, services, one of them being FTPD. If you want to use PAM, you can go into etsy slash pam.d slash vsftpd and edit this vsftpd file here. This controls uh, PAM authentication for vsftpd. Now, without PAM, you can disable specific user accounts from accessing this FTP server by editing etsy vsftpd slash vsftpd slot uh, dot ftp users. Wow, that's a mouthful there. So this dot ftp users file is used to disable certain users from accessing the FTP uh, server. You can also use this user list file located in Etsy vsftpd to control who can access the server and who can't. Um, that has to be enabled and disabled by editing the vsftpd.com file. So with that, let's move on to our scenario. Now in our scenario at the Big Sky Fishing Supply Company, they want to use the new Linux server for file transfers. To do this, you need to install the FTP server, and then we have a list of configurations that need to be performed. First off, we want to disable anonymous logon. This is an enabled by default, and this is a security concern. Then we want to create a banner. A banner is just a message that pops up when someone accesses the FTP server. We want this banner to say, Welcome to the Big Sky Fishing Supply FTP Server, Server 1, Unauthorized Login is Prohibited. Then we want to allow only S. Jones and F. Smith to access the FTP server. No other user should be allowed, including the root user. Finally, we want to configure the FTP server to run now, or, or be started and then also when we reboot the server. Then we'll test logging in as S. Jones and F. Smith from the uh, Windows client as well as trying to log on as an anonymous user and root to see if those work. So with that we can get started on our new configuration and installation of VSFTPD. So I'm over here on the, on the uh, Linux server and I've already started up the package manager. Package manager is running, so for us to install VSFTPD, all we do is click on servers here, then check the FTP server box. Notice down here it says zero of three optional packages are selected. If I click on that, it tells me I can also install Pro FTPD and Pure FTPD. These are two other FTP servers. Um, if you have VSFTPD, the, the primary FTP server, you don't need these, but you could use these instead of FTPD. Uh, they have different configurations and options. Here's another program here called X for Status or Stats, which compiles information about file transfers from log files. So let's close this out and we'll say apply and it says are you sure you want to install VSFTPD? Notice we're installing version 2.04 now version 2.04 uh, is the latest and greatest. I checked their website and so we're fortunate, fortunate about that. When I tried to install VSFTPD on core uh, Fedora core version 4, it didn't come with the latest and greatest. And for us to get the latest and greatest, we would have had to download the source along with a couple other dependencies that were required, compile the source on Fedora core version 4, and then we would finally have the, the latest and greatest version. Um, you would have to do that unless you can find uh, somewhere on the internet a pre-compiled version for Fedora Core version 4. But we're running 5 so luckily we don't have any of that problem. We have the latest and the greatest already. So the installation was successful. I'm going to say OK. And now we can go and edit 
uh, the configuration file and check out the directories where this configuration is stored. So to do that I'm going to open up a terminal window and now I'm going to cd into slash etsy slash vsftpd. I'm going to do an ls minus l and you can see here here's the FTP users file here's the user list file and then here's our main configuration file called vsftpd.conf so the first thing we wanted to do was to disable anonymous login for our FTP server so to do that I'm going to use gedit and I'm going to uh, use gedit to edit etsy vsftpd slash vsftpd.conf alright this brings up gedit our graphical editor and you can see this is the vsftpd.conf file and it's a very uh, long file it has quite a few options in it uh, but it doesn't have every option that you can that you can uh, use you have to go in and add your own options your own values uh, if you want to add some of those other options that are listed in the man page so let's go back up to the top and it says here the very first option is anonymous enabled equals yes well we want this to equal no that way anonymous logins will be disabled and it says beware this is allowed by default if you comment this out so if I just put a comment there it's allowed anyway so the only way to disable it is to say anonymous enable equals no so that's easy that's the first thing we needed to do to uh, control anonymous logins and, and our first step in our scenario so let's go back to the scenario real quick and let's see what the next thing was we needed to do now we want to create an FTP banner that says welcome to the Big Sky Fishing Supply FTP server you know unauthorized login is prohibited so let's go back here and let's scroll down in the file and look for the banner alright right here it says you may fully customize the login banner string here it is FTPD underscore banner equals welcome to the blah FTP service so I'm gonna take out the comment because we don't want that and then scroll over here and say welcome to the big sky fishing supply FTP server server one unauthorized login is prohibited there we go so we configured our FTPD banner that's it right there so when someone logs into the FTP server this is the message that they'll get so that's good let's scroll down here and I saw the next thing we need to do is configure the user list down here or at least check it out so down here at the bottom of the file where it says user list underscore enable equals yes this is important we need this to be here because we're going to use the user list file to uh, specify who's allowed access who or whose access is enabled to access the server now we need to add something that isn't listed here which is user list deny equals no so this is a an option that we'll learn about just in just a second in the user list file that says basically if the user isn't listed in the user list file uh, they aren't allowed access or they are denied access so we're not using user list deny uh, we're using this enable and if they're not in an enable uh, they're not allowed access it's confusing I know but that's how it works so I'm gonna say save right here and now I'm gonna say open and let's open the user list we'll say open there so here it says if user list underscore deny equals no only allow users in this file so that's how it works so what we're going to do is edit this file and only list the two people that we want allowed to access the uh, the FTP server so right here I'm just gonna delete all these and I'm gonna put in two names F Smith and S Jones 
I'm going to say save right here and we just saved the user underscore list file with the two names of the two the only two people allowed access to the FTP server so now let's close out our gedit session and now we need to start the FTP server and set it to run automatically so to do this I'm going to go to system administration server settings and to services over here on our list of services if I scroll down to the very bottom I find VS FTPD that's our new FTP server I'm gonna check it to run automatically and I'm gonna say save right here to save that then I'm gonna start it and it says it was started successfully and you see here the PID and it says it's running so I can close that out the next thing we need to do is to test it so let's go over to our Windows client and we'll try logging in as uh, S. Jones, F. Smith, Root, and Anonymous, and we'll see which ones work and which ones don't. So to do this, I'm going to go to a command line prompt, a Windows command prompt. All right, and I'm going to type FTP and the IP address of our FTP server and hey there we go there's our banner see the banner that says welcome to the big sky fishing supply FTP server server one unauthorized login is prohibited so we got our FTP banner so let's try logging on as S Jones and the password is phishing and it says login was successful so uh, Sally Jones can log in so if I do an LS I get uh, that I have a desktop file, a file called desktop. I can type pwd and I'm put in my home directory, home s jones. Now from here I could cd to slash and do an ls and there's everything in the, the root directory. So I can upload and download based on who I am in Linux. Uh, if I'm not root, I, obviously I can't go in here and you know download or, or remove or replace a file in the Etsy directory or the dev directory so I was able to log in as S Jones now let's log out and let's log in again and this time I'll log in as F Smith passwords phishing and I was able to log in I'll do an LS and a PWD and I'm in home F Smith so that's great our two users that we specified should be able to log in can log in now let's quit out let's reconnect and this time I'm gonna try to log in as root right away permission denied login failed so root cannot log in because root wasn't specified as being able to log in um, now let's quit and let's try to log in as anonymous and it says this FTP server does not allow anonymous logins permission denied login failed so it looks like our test was successful we're able to log in as the two users we specified and not as root and not as anonymous we're able to connect to the FTP server um, you know browse around some directories and because we can do this I'm sure we could also transfer files if we wanted to test that so the test was a success let me log out of this let's go back to our scenario here so we just completed our test we were able to uh, disable anonymous login we saw that wasn't allowed we saw our banner we saw that only these two users could access the server obviously the server is running because we were able to connect to it and it should be running when the server reboots and we tested all this from the Windows client so with that we can move on to our conclusion and in conclusion for video number 18 uh, we successfully installed the Linux FTP server we learned about how it's not installed by default and the actual server that's installed is called VS FTPD or very secure FTPD um, once you choose to install that you could choose to install a couple other FTP servers if you wanted to we found out that there's no graphical configuration tool for VS FTPD uh, they, at least that comes with Fedora and uh, the main the main uh, configuration file for it is etsy vsftpd slash vsftpd.conf then there's a couple other files there called like ftp users and user lists 
that are used to allow or deny who can and cannot access the FTP server. And then in our scenario with the Big Sky Fishing Supply Company, we tested out how to configure the, the server, how to install it, how to uh, only allow certain users. We made sure it was running because we were able to FTP to it from our Windows client. So with that, we've reached the end of video number 18 where we learned about installing and administering Linux FTP server. Thank you very much.